but Konami did it again. Hey guys, Otaku here back with another competitive Yu-Gi-Oh video. So today we're going to be talking about the info dump on info. So Infinite Forbidden is literally just on the horizon. It'll be coming out the week before Nationals, the NAWCQ, which means brand new format for the biggest event of the season, Minus Worlds. And prior to today, we already knew that Engraver and Molchummy were secret rares because Konami already release that information however we were unaware of a few things that were coming out in infinite forbidden mainly some imports but also just other rarities well konami today decided to release the rarities of some of the most highly sought after cards in the set and I have a bad feeling that this was on purpose. So jumping on over to one of the two images, we can see that Dark Magician of the Millennium Archetype Sengenjin and the Tempai Genroku are all going to be ultra rares. We already kind of knew that the Millennium deck was going to be like high rarity most likely because it's going to be one of the big engines and we have already kind of assumed that the fiendsmith cards are going to be secret rare and engraver earlier you know this month was announced to be secret rare so we're not really surprised on that but again roku i kind of had the theory they were going to do this that they were going to do a bit of a higher rarity because the entirety of the tenpai archetype is super rare or commons so it kind of was it was kind of coming. It was expected that the added support was going to be an ultra rare. Uh, I'm still disappointed because now it just kind of stands out like a sore thumb, especially since it's going to be a QCR as well because it's an ultra rare. As for the second image, we have, of course, the Mole Chummy being secret rare, as we have already confirmed. The Exodia is going to be an ultra rare. And then the Gimmick Puppet Fantastics Machinix and the Monster Reborn Retrain are going to be supers or commons. But the biggest thing here was moon of the closed heaven that's right she's going to be out in time for nationals which means uh fiend smith combo is completely live now yes i am sure that the pros of the game have of course been testing for the scenario where she wasn't released in time for nationals however i'm sure they can all agree that she is making the possibility of doing the fiend smith combo incredibly easier Thanks to the fact that she is a generic Link 2 Light Fiend, you just need two generic bodies to go full Fiendsmith combo. So, yeah, again, I'm sure they kind of tested for the possibility she wasn't going to be out, but I'm sure they are breathing easier knowing that she will be out. Now, what is this saying about Infinite Forbidden? Well, to start, this set is going to be the next Agov, meaning that a lot of the higher rarity cards are going to be $100 plus, and thanks to the fact that this set releases right before Nationals, they might even be incredibly inflated before Nationals because everyone's trying to get their hands on these cards. Some of the most highly sought after cards, of course, are going to be Molchummy and the Engraver because they are going to just kind of be essentials. Molchummy is uh, a more balanced version of Max C, and I'm sure plenty of people will be testing it at Nationals, or they might play it safe and not play with it at Nationals on the possibility that maybe it's not as good as we are predicting. But Engraver, by default, this card is going to be a secret rare. This card is going to be $100 plus dollars per copy, and because nationals is going to be literally like one or two weeks away after the set drops it might even be like i might be highballing it here maybe 200 dollars a copy before nationals uh but i'm getting my point across here that this card is going to be incredibly inflated because everyone's trying to get their hands on it right before nationals and honestly the same with genroku tenpai players that want to play tenpai at nationals they're going to be paying good money to get their hands on this card I do think that the win here is that even though I was hoping that Closed Heaven wouldn't be released in Infinite Forbidden, uh, she's a super rare or a common, most likely a super rare. I don't think a card this powerful is going to be a common, but uh, it's a good thing she's a super rare at the very least because at this rate, she's not going to be incredibly expensive unless it's another like Bistia Magnumut situation where it's like a $20 super rare. Uh, but there is also the possibility she gets super underprinted. So we'll just have to see. So basically, if you guys haven't already and you can still afford to do so, I would highly recommend trying to get your hands on some pre-ordered boxes or cases of this set because especially since it's right before Nationals, you might be able to make your money back pretty quickly. And that's really all I have for you guys today. So don't forget to leave a comment down below in the video on your thoughts on the information that has been dumped upon us today. But also, don't forget to leave a like. And if you're not already and you like competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! content, subscribe to the channel. And with that, I'll see you all in the next video. See ya!